Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. So in today's video we'll be talking about cichlid books. It's not exactly book recommendations because I haven't actually read all the books, but it's something like a list. So without further ado, say, let's jump right into it. In this book list is actually a story from a, 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 from a collection. And the collection is named Summer Days and Summer Nights. So there are 12 summer romances and the story I want to talk about is um, Inertia by Veronica Roth. By the way, cichlid I mean the stories which, uh, the books, uh, which revolve around some kind of illness and that. So Inertia by Veronica Roth talks about uh, Matt and Claire, these two best friends. And Matt has had this car accident and one of his last wishes was to have Claire and to be one of his last visitations. Last visitation is this kind of thing where they manage to relive their memories together uh, in order in, in, the, in the order they want to relive them, the memories they want to relive together and it's sort of a last goodbye because they expect him to die. Uh, so this book I actually read this morning because I didn't remember it very well and by the way, I can't remember if I said it already, I think I didn't. Um, I've ranked these books in, uh, based on how much they destroyed me. So this is the first one, obviously, because of the length. Um, I didn't manage to like be destroyed that much because I, it was smaller, so I didn't bond that much with the characters. And if it was bigger, I think I would have cried my eyes out, like, literally. Um, but anyway, this was a really nice story because... Uh, it also dealt with mental health. The car accident wasn't really actually the point of the whole story. I think it was something... Uh, it wanted to send the message of, like, uh, that it's okay to be, to feel down, to feel depressed, as long as you remember that that is not who you are, that's not what defines you. And I think it was kind of a note to life and kind of a note to not letting the pain be who you are and claim your life. So it was really nice, and as I read this morning, I really remembered why I liked it that much. <sighs> so sad. But uh, I really loved it. Okay, so next book. Uh, next book is Five Feet Apart by Rachel Lippincott, Mickey Daughtry, and Tobias. Yeah. So this book talks about uh, Stella and Will. They both suffer from cystic fibrosis. Um, Stella is on her way for having a lung transplant. It's uh, anytime now she will be having a lung transplant. So they both are at the hospital, but Will is, actually doesn't really care about anything else. He just wa he just wants to leave the hospital as long as soon as he turns 18. So that's what he's waiting for um, to leave the hospital. And there's this kind of rule, no, it's not a kind of rule, it's actually a rule. They cannot come close. And by close, I don't, I don't mean uh, relating to feelings, but I actually mean in proximity. They can't be more than uh, six feet apart. Like, they can't be closer than that. So, so Will is exactly what Stella has to avoid, because if they do uh, come close, it will be a mess, because they can't come. Like, is this, this book is exactly what... Uh, it's the literal... it's literally... Uh, the love that she can't have because they actually cannot have anything. They, there can't be any physical contact, so it would all it would be all more difficult. Um, so this was a really bittersweet, cichlid novel, uh, which was sad. But throughout the book, you could feel it was more hopeful than others, uh, and that is why I didn't uh, put it more uh, down in the list. Uh, but um, it, sent it, this, it sent this message of not giving up no matter what, hence the soundtrack of the movie Don't Give Up On Me. Oh my god, <gasps> wait, I remember that. So if you want to know more about this uh, book, I've ha I've, I have done a re uh, book review and I've also accompanied it with how I turned, uh, with how I bought this book. So if you're interested in that, head to the link below and see the book review. Okay. Next book uh, in this cichlid thing list um, is The Midnight Sun by Trish Cook. I've talked about this, I think, one another time, but I'm not sure. Um, so, it talks about Katie Price, a girl who suffers from this illness, which is kind of, like, it doesn't allow her to be in the sunlight. She's kind of allergic to sun, let's say that. She cannot be uh, out in the day because it would kill her, the rays of the sun will kill her. So she has learned to live life inside her um, inside her uh, room, and she only goes out at nights. 
and for all her life she actually has been spying on this guy Charlie she has seen him grow up she has seen him uh, graduate and everything and um, they haven't but without ever really meeting her uh, ever really meeting him or um, hanging out with him so one day they actually do and that turns out to change their whole lives so let me tell you that it was really difficult ranking this book in this kind of list because like there is the movie and the movie is this kind of trap promoting tissues I don't know what the heck but I feel that the book had so much to give but having read it after the movie uh, it kind of disappointed me and I don't know but uh, whatever. However, the whole story felt really sadder than the previous ones I talked about uh, because it talked about this girl who wanted a flavor of life and as soon as she had that, everything went tumbling down in a horrible way. But yeah, it definitely did like... It definitely did trigger more feelings than the others. Not to say that the others weren't like as much... Uh, painful but the movie like physically hurts for the reason I told you before. Next book is The Fault in Our Stars by John Green. This is super known, like it's the main uh, sickly to book that everybody pretty much knows. Uh, uh, this book talks about, oh my god what's her name? Oh yeah, about Hazel who uh, has been, Hazel here, uh, who has been um, uh, suffering from this illness and they have found a way to cure her, not exactly cure her but somehow minimize the effects of this illness and make her feel better um, uh, day by day. But she finds out, she comes to notice that by doing that, by taking this uh, treatment, she has um, stayed behind uh, in front of her all her peers. She hasn't gone on with her life. She hasn't went on with her life and she has stayed behind. Until she meets Augustus, uh, this boy who is full of life, full of laughter, full of passion for everything, uh, who teaches her how to go on and, ha and how there's so much left in life uh, left to do and she uh, sees through his eyes that it's really true what he's saying that there are many things to do yet uh, but it's almost like they have been born under a wrong star both of them because for the time they have had together there will be consequences and a price to pay so this book it didn't, it didn't actually make me cry, but it was so realistic. I think it was much more realistic uh, in conf confront to the others because it showed how it is to have cancer or how it is to have someone you love that has this sad illness. And it was so brutally but greatly like um, shown in this book. And I think that is the reason for which I put it uh, higher than the other books. Like It was wrecking but in its own way. So, the next book in this uh, list is Maybe For You by Jojo Moy. The book talks about um, uh, Will Shiner who has had this motorcycle accident and has uh, taken all of his desire to live his life uh, while well, he was like really full to bursting with life before that. And Luke Clark, this girl who has everything planned and when she loses her job uh, she doesn't know that what, what is coming is what will keep her sane. So um, it turns out that she gets, she's hired at this job where she has to turn to a man and this man turns out to be Will Trainer. So through each other they find the will to go on and Will finds uh, how to... She, he actually finds the will again to live uh, when he was on the verge of doing what he had and uh, what he had to do uh, to finish this. He wanted to unplug himself, you know. Uh, but with Lou coming, he changes his point of view about life and they change each other in this wholesome way that they weren't really expecting. So, look, I, I haven't really read it, but I watched the movie and um, I feel that this has a more complete background, like you get to bond with the characters more because, in fact, it has this more rich background. So, hence it will bring more tears uh, exactly because you get to relate more with the characters and you get to love them much more. So this is actually the reason why it totally destroyed me. And by reminder, I'm speaking for the movie, not for the book, but however I've heard great things for the book too, so if you want to read it, I totally recommend it because I'm sure it will be nice. But probably you'll need a uh, bunch of tissues with you. Okay, I've put it off reading this book only because 
I'm too afraid that it will leave me a mess because the movie left me a mess and so probably the book will too. <laughs> That's the book in this list. P.S. I Love You by Cecilia Ahern. This talks about Jerry and Holly. From the moment they met, they knew they were bound to be together and they have actually been since then. They've married and their life is... Um, it's kind of tricky but it's like nice because their love is real. Until um, Jerry is taken from Holly from an illness and she is left totally bereft. She doesn't know how to go on. She literally is stuck in time, stuck with their memories, stuck with everything. Like everything in their house smells like him. Everything reminds him of him. Reminds her of him. It's really difficult to go on until uh, when she turns 30, I think, or 31, I'm not sure, I think 30 sounds better. Um, a, a letter comes from her deceased husband, like showing many ways uh, to cope with what happened and how to go on. It's his way of helping his wife to go on uh, because he knew how what an enormous impact it would have had his uh, death to his wife. So um, these letters keep coming and they find Holly getting better and better with each letter that comes. Uh, so this book, again, I haven't read it, but I have seen the movie. It's a movie which made me cry buckets of tears. Uh, it has a light part, the movie, and I suppose the book too. But besides that, it, really, it literally like destroyed me, every inch of me. Except for Inertia, all of these books have movie adaptations, which are really great. I totally recommend them, so if you want them, check them out. It would be really nice, I think. I love these movies. And I also want to say that I think these books, many have... Uh, it's some somewhat of a controversial matter, because many see these cichlid books as something that um, depresses young people because they're meant for young people most of them but it's it's good to read some of them because like you can see it's not only about the illness i think it the most fundamental part is the message they carry uh that they that you have to go on there there's nothing you can do i mean you have to go on because life is a gift and no matter how sucky it is the best of it and i think it's better to help yourself live a good or at least better life than what you are leading. Go on and try to cope with that and try to solve the difficulties because then what's the matter in living each day equal to the other with the same pain in your chest? So yeah, um, I don't want to get this much deep with this but I just want to say that and uh, let, let me know <laughs> my opinion. That's all for today, I hope you enjoyed. Uh, let me know if you did. Please like, comment and subscribe if you want to say something or even say hi. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye!